All right, team. Hold on one second, guys. I'm getting it pulled up. All right, guys, today we got the Fed meeting, or not the Fed meeting, the FOMC minutes report. All right, guys, so yeah, the Fed minutes report released at 2 p.m. All right, guys. So, yeah, we're going to cover the report released at 2 p.m. Market has essentially bounced back. Um, all right, team. All right, team. Uh, yeah, the report goes live at 2 p.m. Um, market's starting to rebound. You see Apple bouncing back, uh, Google bouncing back. I'm going to have to go get some caffeine. And then we also have NVIDIA earnings. So, again, we got the Fed minutes report right now. Every six weeks, the Fed meets um, to raise or lower interest rates. After that, about three weeks after that, we have what's called the Fed minutes report. It's a report, uh, HTML or PDF file that dropped from the Apple website right at 2 p.m. on the dot that a lot of algorithms interpret and, and we get market reactions from it. Uh, that is what's going on today. Um, so yeah, we'll see what the report says. Hopefully they're optimistic things. I know Jerome Powell referenced this report a couple times, so it will be big tomorrow. We also have GDP coming out as well as ECE Friday. So a lot of stuff coming out uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the market will react to it. So it'll have an impact over the market. How much, we don't know, but it'll have some impact for sure. Let me get some music playing. And so, yeah, it'll impact the market, just how much, we don't really know. There you go. Last month, the spy moved seven dollars. Seven dollars is kind of a big move for the spy, you know. It's a couple percent. I mean, that's a big move. Buy right around four hundred bucks. Yeah, the Fed minutes report is in fifty-seven minutes. That's exactly one of this. We're just starting the stream a little bit early. this up on the screen so you can see it we'll probably trade a little bit for now we're up a couple hundred on the day market looks like it wants to rebound but it might be choppy ahead of this too um but again market doesn't look bad uh, let me open up a new chart here okay yeah we might take a couple trades based off of this market doesn't look bad i mean everything looks to be rebounding i'm green on most of my positions today we're green on google green on microsoft green on ford uh Again, watching the spy here. Spy over 400. It looks like it wants to bounce there. But again, it might be kind of a choppy day leading into it. Bro, I got these stitches in my mouth from this tooth thing. Thoughts on Ford? I'm in Ford right now. I got a, you know, 100 and something shares of Ford. Uh, we're, we're at about 1250 is our average price on Ford, about 150 shares. If you want to look at that position, it's right here. Again, we're also in Google. You can see we're green on the day, down on the position on Google. 
uh, average price about 92.50 for Google. We got about 150 shares of Google, 150 shares of Ford. We have uh, again. I'm not guaranteeing anything about these positions. I have no idea what they're going to do. I might be wildly wrong about all of it, uh, so don't copy me. Oh man. Uh, as for day trading, we're up about 200 on the day, $205 or so on the day. Uh, so we'll see how that turns out as well. Again, we're going to do a poll right here. We're also going to do a Twitter poll as well here, team. With that, let me know what kind of reaction you think we're going to get today. Um, We have a positive or negative reaction to the FOMC minutes report. Positive, negative, and then neutral are going to be the three options here. Vote on the poll. The poll right there. We're also going to do a Twitter poll. guys spy rip it up uh, again we did take a position on the micro e mini we're in four contracts here uh not a huge position i just want to see if it bounces we're going to try to be patient we got a couple hundred dollar cushion on the day and so we're going to start a swinging a little bit heavier into this um i see a lot of fun so up yeah we're gonna do a twitter poll as well um Join us live uh, again, 2 p.m. on the dot, about 50 minutes. All right, guys. So, yeah, FOMC. So, you can see we're about break even on the trade we're currently in. Post the link to this on Twitter. So do me a favor, hit the like button if you haven't already. We appreciate it. Um, all right, we got the uh, we got the poll on there live again. We are pushing up a little bit. You can see we're up about twenty dollars on this trade. Uh, I'll go ahead. And Try to get out on the ask price if I can up here. Right there. All right, so we got filled on half of that position. Cut the rest manually. Apple ripping up nicely. I'll just go ahead and get out there. Uh, I think that's a reasonable spot to get out at. Again, you can see we're up about 2.30 on the day now. Not bad. Small little green day, but I'll take it with what's been going on. Uh, again, if you want to vote on the poll, here is the link. We're also going to send an email newsletter out if you want to catch that too. Sounds like a rug pull. Hey, maybe. Again, pretty split down the middle. 45% think we're going to get a positive reaction out of about 100 votes so far. Uh, about 49% think we're going to get a negative reaction and 6% are neutral on the day. Uh, 
not doing too bad in everything else. Again, Google bouncing back a little bit. We're close to break even on Google now. Uh, we also have Microsoft that we're holding, which we're green on the day, but down still total on that trade. We're going to have to give that one a little bit longer. Um, we'll see if Google bounces back for us first. Uh, but, but yeah, you can see the SPY starting to rip up today uh, up to about 400.3s. We got Apple up there at 149.20s. Vote on those polls. Again, we got our Twitter poll going live as well. Mm. Sorry, I got that tooth implant I'm still dealing with. Uh, minutes are at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. In about 40, 45 minutes or so, the numbers come out. Uh, so basically today, again, this is the procedure of this, right? So every six weeks, Fed uh, uh, raises, lowers interest rates. They do their FOMC meeting and they raise their lower rates depending on the meeting. And, you know, depending on how bad inflation currently is at that point in time. Uh, with that... Um, you know, they, they raise or lower rates. If inflation is really bad, they raise rates aggressively. If inflation's not bad, they, you know, don't raise rates. Uh, because by raising rates, what it does is it makes, you know, people have to pay higher for mortgage, for spending in general. So when spending, when, when people have to pay more to spend and get stuff done, then they stop spending as much, right? And what happens when you stop spending is businesses must then lower their prices in order to remain competitive, thus combating inflation. And that's the whole logic and procedure of the Fed raising or lowering interest rates every six weeks. Uh, now, once they do that, the last one was last uh, was on the first of this month. So on February 1st, they raised rates 50 or no, 25 basis points. Uh, on the 1st of February, um, that was as expected. You know, most of the time they're going to raise rates as expected. And most of the time the banks know how much they're going to raise rates before the meeting. Uh, the question really here is how much are they going to raise rates during the next Fed meeting, right? The next one's going to be mid-March. Uh, that's where the next FOMC meeting is actually going to be. Uh, and so the question and the, the interest and nuance of this Fed minutes report is how much is this Fed minutes report going to tell us about their potential rate hike in March? And with all of that said, you know, that will move markets to a certain extent. Again, algorithms are going to pick it up, start trading it. Uh, that's kind of how it goes. Is they, you know, they move markets uh, in that way. And again, we'll see what happens. I don't, nobody knows what's going to happen. We got to read the report when it comes out. We're not going to be able to. We can read it here if you guys want us to, but we're going to show you where to find it. We're also going to watch the market reaction. We're going to give you guys the cliff notes. This is like an eight or 12 page report. I can't remember. I think it's like 12 pages. Uh, it's a big report. You know, it's it's lengthy. Uh, if you want to find out where they dropped the report, I can show you that here as well. So just to give you a breakdown of this here, okay? Here is the Fed website where they do these reports. All right, so here's the Fed website. Uh, you can see the last minutes report was on um, February 16th. Or no, no, this is from 2020. I'm sorry. So... Yeah. So we haven't done a minutes report for this meeting yet. The last Fed meeting was on the 31st and the 1st. The minutes report will show up right here. So you can look at the last report, which was December of 2022 here. And so you can see the last minutes report came out January 4th. So January 4th of this year is when the last minutes report out. And you can see you can find it here and you can read it here. You can just click HTML and you can scroll down and read the report. This is where it's going to be released at 2 p.m. Uh, and this is what we're going to be breaking down. You can kind of see it's a big report. It's not small. It takes a long time. But what happens is that algorithms are going to interpret this report and they're going to show you basically, you know, staff economic outlook is relevant as well. You can read that type of stuff. They basically show you where we're at regarding inflation, why the Fed chose to make the decision that they did during the associated Fed meeting. Right. So if we go back here. Here's December Fed meeting. Here's the minutes report from December. We are now on January. So we are at this this one right here on 2023 FOMC meeting. We're, we're, we're covering the January uh, 31st, February 1st meeting. The one that was really the, the meeting was on February 1st. Uh, so whenever the Fed minutes report is going to come out, it's going to be right here. You know, so you'll be able to refresh this page and we'll put this page up in chat, but it'll be right there is where the Fed minutes report will show up. Uh, but again, you don't have to go anywhere. We're going to cover it here live anyway. So you don't even need to go to this if you don't want to. We're going to cover it live probably faster than you're going to be able to read it anyway. And so again, if you want to check it out, here is the link for that. 
check it out. We'll also put it in the description if you want to catch it there. Uh, so you can kind of see what it's all about. And uh, we're also going to post it live once we get it. Well, again, you guys want to know, I hear people saying, oh, inflation's really bad, inflation's really bad. It is. But again, the way you combat inflation long term is you combat it through investing. You know, that's what investing does is it combats inflation. Again, stock market investing combats inflation. Real estate investing combats inflation. Regardless of whether you have a paid off home or not, you a mortgage combats inflation. Um you know, like I said, you get a $200,000 mortgage, you know, in, in 20 years, that mortgage is going to be less significant uh, of income, you know. Uh, how's the stream? Are we lagging on stream? What's going on? Okay, now we're good. All right. Yeah, a lot of other stuff combats inflation. Yeah, we'll see. I don't expect anything more than pats on the back about how great they were raising 25 basis points last time. Yeah, let's not argue or troll. It's just not healthy. Both of y'all, if y'all disagree, just don't talk to each other. No reason to argue about it. Uh... Yeah, for sure. Doctor, I agree with you, man. And again, for all those saying I'm super bearish, I want to show you this, right? So we, we posted this on our Twitter. Um, and again, I want you guys to really listen to this. I, I posted this last Thursday. Somebody asked me last Thursday, like, I think sometimes bears, just because I disagree that we're going to crash right now, you know, think that I'm just like a pure long and I'm not at all. Like, again, uh, we've been saying this for the last week, really. Um, remember we stream for four hours at a time, but like, listen to this, y'all can hear the music, right? So I just want to show you guys this. Uh, this is something that we said, uh, a few different times over the last couple of days, right? So if you, as long as you can hear the music, which you should be able to, uh, listen to this, actually, I'm going to stop with this and I'm going to reshare just so I can make sure y'all can hear this. Uh, let me see. There we go. All right. So listen to this and for a long on the spy, Oof. I'm not going to, like I said, I told people this is what I would expect to happen. This was uh, last we're Thursday. Gonna continue on this trend, at least. I we were at what 410 I would expect to happen at the time. 410 on down the to 400. I think again, if you look at the market, guys, over the last, yeah. I think again, what I would expect to happen is a dip down to 400. I think again, if you look at the market, guys, over the last four months, if we really look at the market, I would expect something like this to happen, right? So so far, we have pumped up for a while now. You know, again, last Thursday for a while now consolidating into this here we're about right here now i guess what i would expect is a pullback to 400 right here and then where are we at right now bounce at 400 we could also break down a little bit but i think this is where we'll start to kind of go like this and then maybe we'll make another leg up and continue like that maybe maybe not we could just dump down here and just kind of you know drop like that that's yeah, so uh, again, we, we literally caught exactly what was going to happen last Thursday, and we got to pull back the SPY. If you look at the SPY currently, uh, as we say, the SPY's at 400.5. It's been consolidating around 400. Now, again, it doesn't mean we're going to hold here, but 400 is a big psychological level. That's kind of like a pivot point. Like when we pull back, you know, it's a reasonable spot to pull back to. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. Again, we'll see what happens. Uh, I, I hope we go up, but you never really know for sure. But yeah, I think bears, just because I disagree that we're going to crash right now, think that I think the market's going to only go up. I really don't. Like like I said, the, the the context of that question was somebody was asking me, hey, should I buy stuff right now? And I told him, I was like, I'm not buying anything right now. The market's too extended on the upside. Like we need a reasonable pullback to 400 before I start buying stuff up, which is kind of what I've been doing. You know, we're green on the day on Microsoft. 
Google, all that stuff, just from kind of buying the dip. And who knows? Uh, we've already taken profit once on Google. Uh, we'll see if we do it again, but but yeah, yeah, definitely top three for sure. All right, market's starting to pump up to 400.5. Uh, and I will say this. I'll say this again. If we do get a crash, it could happen over the next few days. I'm not saying we will, but we got a lot of economic influences over the last uh, over the next few days. Today, we got the Fed minutes. We got NVIDIA earnings after that. Uh, tomorrow, we've got GDP data, jobless claims numbers. Uh, Friday, we have the PCE deflator, which is an inflationary metric and gauge that the Fed uses to you know determine how bad inflation is, right? So PCE on Friday is incredibly important. It's called the core PCE is the relevant one, contrary to how CPI and stuff like that usually is. Like with CPI, base CPI is more important. With PCE, core PCE is the more watched, more important, and more influential metric over uh, you know base PCE. So Again, we'll see what happens. That's Friday, GDP tomorrow. Again, uh, the question is, are we fearing an inflationary you know, market or are we fearing a recession more, right? If we're fearing inflation more, GDP growth is bad, right? We don't want to see GDP growth necessarily. GDP growth will mean we'll get a negative response in markets. If we are fearing a recession more so, uh, then we want to see economical growth and GDP growth. And so higher than expected will evoke a positive response. My guess is we're still in an inflation fearing territory. So my guess is if we show positive GDP growth, we're going to get a negative market response, a negative market reaction. Uh, but again, it's definitely not set in stone. We don't really know what we're going to get uh, in that way. So we'll see. Hey, right, nice, John. Congrats, man. Uh, we trade stocks, futures, mostly, Vicky. Uh, swing trading uh, is what I do probably the best. I day trade as well, but, I, you know, a little bit better at swing trading, I would say. Investing, economy stuff. All right, guys, let's look at the poll numbers here. Uh, again, 46% think we're going to have a positive market response uh, to, to the Fed meeting or to the Fed minutes report. 41% uh, think we're going to have a negative market response and 13% think we're going to come in neutrally. Uh, again, I don't know what we're going to get. Looking at Twitter, we did a Twitter poll as well, and that's out of about 400 votes or so. Uh, on Twitter, uh, we got about 70 votes on Twitter. 58% uh, think bullish, 42% think bearish here. So... Okay, we'll see what kind of response we get. We're, we day traded today some in futures. You can see we're up about 230. Uh, and so in, in stocks, currently we are up on the day about 90 bucks. So could be better, but you know, I will take that. Uh, green is good, you know. Um, so, yeah, Sin hanging out right now. Yeah, definitely top two for sure of all time. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, again, I don't know what kind of market response we're going to get today. Uh, I hope it's positive. I'm, I'm generally like an optimist. Like I want to see the market do well. Uh, I don't necessarily want to see the market do bad. Uh, and so I know we got a lot of bears at home that are all like, hey, you know, the market's going to crash. The market's going to crash. And maybe we do. I hope y'all are wrong, though. I'll tell you that. I hope I hope y'all are wrong. Uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to hope y'all are wrong. And y'all might be. Y'all might be right, though. Like, like I said, I really don't know. Why is Nat pumping up? Uh, I'm not sure. I heard a lot of people talking about it, though. I don't really follow Natty Gas that much, uh, but it did rip up. Boil. Boil up about, what, like 10% since the open? A little bit less than that, maybe. My gut feeling is we're going to go temporarily up back to 3,800 in about two months. That might be possible. I mean, that's, you know. Bitcoin dump. Where's Bitcoin at right now? We can look at Bitcoin. I wonder, uh, I'm not sure if Bitcoin's going to be like super heavily influenced by this, but we'll have to wait and see.
Bro, I got the stitches from... Uh, I got the stitches in my mouth still, man. I got the stitches. I can feel them in my jaw. Uh, it's uncomfortable. I'm about to cut these things out, man. They're supposed to dissolve, bro. I'm on day five after this, uh, this tooth surgery. Uh, they're supposed to dissolve already, but they just haven't. Um, but I can feel them. They're like poking out of my mouth. Uh, hey, y'all hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell, guys. We appreciate the support. Uh, but yeah, subscribe if you haven't yet. Uh, Again, hit the notification bell too. Um, you know, we broke uh, we broke 100k last uh, last week. I believe it was last week. So thank you guys so much. We got our check mark. Like I said, we are now a man of note, and nobody can tell me anything anymore. Um, yeah, definitely top three men of note in the world right now. Uh, but but yeah. Like I said, we live vicariously through myself. I once had an awkward moment just to see how it feels. My beard has more experience than a lesser man's body. You know, when it's raining, it's because I'm thinking of something sad. My shirts never wrinkle. I'm left-handed and right-handed. Okay, I'm a man of note. I have a check mark. Um, don't judge me, all right? Top three greatest traders. And we got about 34 minutes left until the Fed Minutes report comes out. Spies break at highs right now, guys. We are up to 400.7 right now 400.8 kind of a red to green move in markets here uh again i thought we might get choppy action today just because you know a lot of times the market's apprehensive waiting for the report to drop but not today man we are pushing up again i thought the extension was on the downside we've dropped enough over the last few days to where it's reasonable to assume that we might bounce back short term uh, oh i'm in lift as well i forgot about lift what's lift doing i bought lift after it had that big bad gap down Oh, I'm basically break even in lift. I'm surprised I'm not down more than that. But look at Apple rip it up. Spy almost the 401. Yeah, I was book of the year twice. That's right. How long until 2 p.m.? Oh, oh, I got you guys. I'll put a timer. Usually I got, uh, I have a timer up. I, I, I got you, man. Hold on. Honestly, yesterday, I'm on kind of a new computer. And so I, it doesn't feel the same. Like, I got up I got up yesterday morning and I have one of those raising desks, right? That like raise up and then go down and then I can like raise them and lower them. So I have one of those desks, right? And so I've got, I had two 34 inch stacked monitors on this side, right? So I had two uh, like ultra wide monitors stacked together. And so when I came into the, my office yesterday morning and I tried to lower my desk back to the ground so I could sit down, the leg, one, the left side of my desk's leg was like off the ground like three inches. And so my whole desk was like this, like tilted. And I tried to like hold it down so it wouldn't just destroy my setup, but my whole top monitor just crashed to the ground. It's currently on the floor. Coffee spilled everywhere, bro. I got to shampoo my, my carpet. Uh, you know, it was unfortunate. And, and so I'm only on three monitors now. Uh, and so it's not the same. And I'm just so used to having the four that I forget to do it. But let me put a timer up. We got about 31 and a half minutes. That's right. There we go. All right, there you go. That is the time until the Fed Minutes report. Top two? I mean, should I bump myself up to top two? I mean, I think I definitely deserve it, you know. I ooze hum uh, humility here. I mean, listen. I should be top two. That's right. You know? uh, it could be negative order. Order block. It could be negative, man. We will see. What about the Dixie? We can look at the dollar index. Generally, there's an inverse correlation here. Uh, and with that, with the big bear action we've had over the last few days, the dollar index has moved all the way back up to over 104s uh, at 104.20s right now. Uh, but it's what's very strange, and I'll talk about this. What's very strange is that it, there seems to be a almost a positive correlation right now between the spy and the dollar index. Uh, so the S and P and the dollar index are moving with each other, and generally there's an inverse correlation. But like. Look at Apple on the middle, and then look at the Dixie on the right. They look the same. Same thing with the Spy here. If we put the Spy next to it, 
pretty similar. You know, dip at the open, rebound over VWAP, you know, break highs. You know, dip at the open, rebound over 200 EMA, break previous highs. Not exactly the same, but it's similar enough to where it might not be, you know, there might not be much of a correlation today is what it kind of looks like. Uh, yeah, we're going to cover NVIDIA earnings. We're going to stream the full earnings release, earnings call, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, I think we probably will do 50 basis points. I'll be surprised if we don't. Uh, but I think a 25 basis point rate hike will cause a pretty bullish response if we do. Uh, but I think it'll probably be 50. Uh, you know, we had PPI came out a little bit higher than expected. CPI came out a little bit higher than expected. Still better than last time for CPI. But still, you know, it was it was higher than expected. So I think we'll probably do 50. Maybe not, though. I don't know. Can y'all hear the music? You should be able to. FOMC minutes is what Jerome thought back in January. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, again, we got to look at the previous history of responses by the uh, Fed minutes report. Dollar index just popped over the 200 EMA, and with that, we are getting a drop in the S&P. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're getting some inverse correlation there. No, no, they're not going to announce the 50 in the minutes report, Douglas. Uh, Again, the next Fed meeting, uh, the next rate hike decision, uh, generally the schedule is it comes out. It'll probably be, I think it's going to be mid-March. Mid-March is when the next Fed meeting is going to be. Um, and so they're going to do, like, during those meetings at 2 p.m., they drop the rate hike decision at 2.30. They do the, uh, they do the press conferences. Uh, that's not going to be what happens here. This is just at 2 p.m. St- uh, 2 p.m., they're going to drop the, the report, and we're going to review the report, watch the market reaction, all that stuff. That's how it's going to be. What's up, Morning do? Yeah, thanks for the help, man. Uh Fed was extremely timid in the past two meetings. Inflation's still pretty high. Yeah, I agree. Uh, there's no meeting today. Uh, this is just a report that goes live at 2 p.m. Bots, man. A lot of bots. Uh, my dollar index moving up spy pulling back a little bit we can look at apple as well but bro this thing in my mouth is gonna drive me crazy man i could feel the stitches from i got a i got a tooth pull and they put a bone graft in there on saturday it's like my back molar you know right next to my wisdom tooth um but now it's just incredibly awkward because I can't speak without feeling the stitches on the side of my mouth. How do I cut this right now, I guess? How do I get this out? I don't know. Yeah, I know what the... So the Fed Minutes Report uh, is... Again, it's a PDF file that goes live at 2 p.m. that reviews why they made the last decision that they did. Basically, this one's uh, looking back at the February 1st rate hike decision and meeting and it's looking back into their notes essentially and their thoughts on why they chose to make that decision which was 25 basis points uh, they might give some foresight into what they'll do in the future and, and again the big thing is like they give you an explanation of why they made the decision it's a it's a long pdf file and so they'll talk about where they saw inflation why they chose to make the decision and there might be again some type of tell into what they might do uh, in the mid-march meeting uh, but algorithms are going to pick it up, and we'll post the cliff notes and, and review what they say uh, at 2 p.m. But, but yeah, algorithms are going to pick it up pretty fast. I'm not going to pull them out, but I feel like cutting the piece that's hanging because I don't think it's doing anything. What do you think about Tesla short term, long term? Uh, um, let me see. Look, I, I'm sure I'm kind of like missing out 
on on scared money doesn't make money type of stuff with Tesla. But Tesla is just so volatile, man. Uh, again, Elon Musk it has been a little bit unstable on social media. Uh, but I think Ch- Tesla is a game changing stock. And I think I saw some optimistic things. Like I saw Biden post, uh, some, some relatively friendly words for Elon, you know, uh, a couple days ago. And so I think it's optimistic. Uh, looking at the PE ratio, the problem with Tesla historically is that the PE ratio has been pretty high. Um, the PE ratio now is about 54. So it's still pretty high. That's pretty high. You know, it's about two times what you'd really prefer it to be. Uh, so high PE ratio, but does big moves, man. I mean, this thing has gone up like 100% in a couple months. So, you know, big risk, big reward type of trade, but not necessarily stable enough for me to want to invest my money into it. And I know I know a lot of people might disagree, but hey, it's a, it's my own personal preference. Everybody's a little bit different. With what I invest in stuff, I just need to be sure things. And I'm not saying Tesla's not one. I just think it's really volatile short term. Yeah, Simon, for whatever reason, my guy Simon's just kind of going from video to video trying to say upsetting things. I mean, I appreciate you engaging with my content, Simon. I mean, you're banned forever now. But I appreciate you gauge, engaging with my content, sir. Thank you so much, man. Um, big risk, better. Yeah, I, there's a big risk. I didn't say I was, again, I'm not political at all. I'm actually pretty neutral politically. I don't really root for either side. I'm just kind of neutral. I just dislike the whole realm of politics, to be honest. And mostly go by policy over you know, individual politicians. I don't really care about any of that stuff. Uh, but when looking at the uh, stability of Tesla long term, I think it's important for him to not be too one sided. There shouldn't be too much polarity regarding how he looks at things, because I think that is not the necessarily it's not necessarily good for stock price. Uh, but again, some companies have gotten away with it before. So, again, I don't know. Um, but it's it's less of a i don't know i like tesla i want a tesla you know yeah no again he's like some weird troll who's going from video to video trying to comment i mean like i said i kind of pity people like that man they don't have any time like they're going from video to video i appreciate him watching my videos man you know uh his, like in the end, you know, like I said, views help. Thank you so much. Uh, but you know, he's gonna have to do it without commenting now. Um, let's watch 149 on Apple. We'll see what happens. All right, Tesla, speaking of Tesla, just broke over $200 again. Spy at 400.5. So, uh, yeah, it looks good, man. We caught it right on the money last Thursday. Uh, and so, again, this is why I like swing trading. This is why I tend to do better with swing trading. Again, I'll play it again since we got more people, a little bit more people here now. Um, but this is why, you know, this is why swing trading has been our better style of trading. Look at Tesla rip up. Spy almost back up to 400.7s. Uh, almost 400.7s mostly bears on twitter so the bears are leading oh no no i'm sorry mostly bulls bulls are at 53 percent on twitter 47 percent for the bears i'll probably make a short out of this i guess But again, this can kind of help you understand swing trading. Like uh, somebody asked me, should I buy? Should I buy the SPY right now at 410s essentially or something like that is what they asked. And so what I said was this. Uh, and again, in hindsight, we were absolutely right. Oof. I'm not going to, like I said, I told people this is what I would expect to happen. Uh, if we're going to continue on this trend, at least. I think what I would expect to happen is a dip down to 400. I think, again, if you look at the market, guys, over the last four months, if we really look at the market, I would expect something like this to happen, right? So, so far we have pumped up. Yeah, we were at like four tens. Yeah, we pumped up big for a while now. Consolidating into this here, we're about right here now. I guess what I would expect is a pullback to 400 right here. 
and then maybe we get a bounce at 400. We could also break down a little bit, but I think this is where we'll start to kind of go like this, and then maybe we'll make another leg up and continue like that. Maybe, maybe not. We could just dump down here and just kind of, you know. Yeah, and so that was last Thursday, you know, and if you look at what's happened since then, I mean, hey, you know, when you're right, you're right. Uh, but it kind of shows like extension. You know, you can't be too greedy. It's a, it's a balancing act of like swing trading where it's like you don't want to just randomly buy it just because the market's been pushing up. Because at a certain point, you know, there's an argument for we're too extended on the upside. And I think that was there at four tens on the spy. Um, and so when you buy stuff, like when I buy stuff with swing trading, it's usually buying stuff as they're pulling back. Like I want really beat up stocks. You know, I want, uh, this is honestly where I bought at 400 is still pretty, you know, it's still kind of high for me to buy. Uh, I'm kind of a bottom feeder with swing trades. I want really big extension on the downside short term that I can kind of buy up because a lot of the time the downside, the downside extension doesn't stick. Like it drops down really emotionally. And then all the bears come out and the bears are like, oh, we're going to crash. We're going to crash. And then nobody ends up buying except for some people like me. And then you buy it up and you just kind of let it rebound, which it normally does. Not always. And, and again, if we do get a crash, you know, it's possible over the next couple of days just because we got a lot of economic releases. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but a lot of influential releases happen over the next two or three days, two days, really uh, today uh, and tomorrow, uh, including the Fed minutes report, which is at about 20 minutes now. Uh, so, again, we'll see what happens. I hope we get some positive stuff, but, you know, who knows? gold a little bit gold is you know like i said if if stuff overseas really starts to pop off then gold's the the gold's probably what i'm gonna be buying you know um outside of that uh gold is also an inflationary hedge you know that a lot of people use you know when when you're when you're looking to hedge against inflation long term you know you got gold you got crypto you got stocks you got real estate it's all it, it's all inflationary hedges it's trying to keep up with inflation is all it really is so uh, yeah, gold is one of those things, you know. Any Bitcoin opinion? I like Bitcoin. I like crypto. I think Bitcoin holding over 25K is really good. I think uh, it's good to see Bitcoin back over 20K and actually holding. Uh, and again, I think we the, the market moves in four stages of Bitcoin and crypto. At least it, it history has shown that it kind of has. Uh, and I think we're just kind of waiting for the next leg up. Um, hopefully, you know, I hope it does. At least I don't know for sure. Nobody does, uh, but I hope it does. Uh, Tesla back over 200s. Apple back over 149s. Do we short Bitcoin on this FOMC report? I mean, the only reason you would short if if you think if you think the market's going to tank, you short Bitcoin. You know, but I'm not telling you you should. But like. There's going to be a positive correlation most of the time with SPY or S&P and Bitcoin, you know, so it's like you short bigger. I don't know if you should or not. Um, the only logic behind it is like if you think the market's going to crack, tank, drop, whatever, not necessarily crash. But if you think the market's going to drop. Yeah, I mean, you can short Bitcoin. I'm not saying you should or whatever, but you can. You know, the good thing about crypto, like people don't know the benefit of crypto. The, be the benefit of crypto is that it's less regulated. They'll give you like 100x leverage and all this crazy stuff in crypto. Um, so, you know, uh, if I had to roll something from nothing, like take a very small account and roll it into something big, I'd probably go to crypto trading more so than stock trading. There's too many, there's too much red tape in the stock market. Futures is a good option too, but you got to be good at it. And, uh, you know, dollar up then gold goes down and vice versa well the dollar index in gold i mean what's a gold etf give me a gold etf yeah i mean i like the pump like i said i'm up about 110 dollars in stocks about 240 in futures or so GLD. All right. All right. So gold is down today. This is a positive correlation. Or this is a positive uh, ETF. It's not an inverse one. 
Yeah, in that regard, there's just an inverse correlation between gold and the dollar index. I guess it makes sense because there's generally an inverse correlation with the market and, and the Dixie, but the higher the dollar is getting, the the more people worried about inflation, the more they hedge gold and vice versa. You know. But I don't know. Gold, like I said, I don't watch gold a ton. Um I watch the S P, the Dow, uh, you know, the Q and, and mostly tech stocks, but we all have our niches in trading, you know. Are you in anything right now? Yeah, I'm in a bunch of stuff. I'm in AMC, Bed Bath, Ford, Google, Lyft, Microsoft. What will likely happen to the Q today? Honestly, I really have no idea, man. Um, Q is tech, mostly. So it's got like NVIDIA, it's got Tesla. You know, in terms of weight, tech stocks are high on the Q. Uh, but it mostly follows the S&P 500. Uh, and so, uh, again, we don't know what we're going to get. It depends on... It depends on, depends on how the market interprets the Fed minutes report in about 15 minutes is what it depends on. It depends on what the market shows for that, you know. Are you bullish or bearish? Well, I think we could bounce right here. But again, I really have no idea what the market's going to do. Uh, I try not to predict big moves like this. I always try to react, not predict necessarily. Uh, and I have, I genuinely have no idea. I'm an optimist. I want the market to go up, but will it is if it will is a different story, you know. Uh, I hope it goes up, you know. But uh, I think I think the pullbacks in the last couple days uh, show that it it's reasonable for a bounce to happen now. Uh, I think we've pulled back to 400. We've dropped a lot over a couple day period, and so I think there the market. I think if there's extension short term, it's on the downside. Uh, and again, the video you saw me post a second ago was talking about when the spy was at 410 and I thought the extension was on the upside, meaning it's kind of due for a pullback. Uh, but what, how we react to this meeting, nobody really knows. Again, the algorithms are going to analyze it. They're going to search for keywords that they think influence sentiment and then they're going to trade based off of that and that's going to move markets some. But how much, in what way, we don't know. I'm new to trading. What's your favorite trading book? I mean, books are cool and all, bro, but unless, like, you're just trying to learn about trading psychology, number one, Trading in the Zone is probably the best trading book ever made. Number one, Trading in the Zone, Mark Douglas, rest in peace. Good dude, you know, ahead of his time uh, in terms of trading. Uh, but yeah, but that's probably the best trading book there ever is Trading in the Zone. It talks a lot about trading psychology. Uh, with that, though, I think if you really want to learn trading, books are not necessarily where you want to learn it. Uh, just uh, they, We've evolved past books in that regard where learning trading, you can learn investing from books, you know, swing trading, anything tech based, technicals based, you want to learn through uh, videos, mostly support and resistance confirmations, you know, uh, you can use books as well as one of those kind of learning tools, but you're not going to learn tech technicals purely based off of books, man. Not in my opinion, at least. All right, so Spy pulled it back to 400.5s. Yeah, there's a bunch of good books. Jack Schwager's Market Wizards is good. It basically interviews profitable traders and tries to find kind of common ground between all of them so you can kind of know the right things to do. It's a good book. Uh, there's a lot of different versions of it now. But again, books are only going to get you so far, in my opinion. Anything about Bitcoin short term? I don't know. Uh, Bitcoin... I hope it runs up past 25K in the next couple weeks, but I don't know. AMC came all the way back down to sixes today. All right, guys, we got about 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Are you bullish or bearish? I'm, I guess I'm bullish, but uh, again, 
I don't really know. I, I think the extension is probably on the downside short term, like over the last couple of days. And so I could see us bouncing, but again, I have no idea. Not an investment professional. Don't sue me. I have no idea what's going to happen. Might have no idea what I'm talking about, man. Uh, so yeah, but y'all hit that subscribe button. I am going to throw it in sub only mode. If you have not subscribed yet, I appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button. Help us grow. We broke 100K last week. We appreciate the support, guys. Will Bitcoin drop more after the meeting? I, I really have no idea what Bitcoin's going to do, man. I hope it hits 25K, but uh, again, I just, I have no idea. Hey, right, thank you, man. All right, guys, we got about nine minutes, nine minutes. What kind of caffeine do I have? I'm going to go grab a Celsius, guys. I think I have some caffeine. I'll be right back. Give me like 10 seconds. I'll be right back. We back. Let me see if I can get my headphones working. All right, guys. But yeah, spy pull it back a little bit. It's under 400.5s uh, right now. There we go. All right, we are back. Hey, good luck, Sean. I'm going to be very angry or happy. You long or short, man. John, what's happening with Google? Uh, Google looks good, man. Uh, I'm liking Google right now. Microsoft, too. They're rebounding back up. My average on Google is 92.50. So we're at like 92.20. So I need like 30 cents or something. Uh, so we're pretty flat on that one so far. Nice beard. Hey, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Like I said, I'm like the Dos Equis guy right now, man. I got my check mark. I'm going to flex it really quick. There you go. Look at me. I'm going to go to the comments just to look at it. Look at look at the check mark. Admire it. Um, But no, I appreciate it. No idea what gold's going to do. Yeah, you can just do a strangle. a funny story so about a year ago i would say i thought you pronounced it straggle and so for like a solid couple weeks on stream i was talking about yeah you should buy a straggle you know like straggle rock and uh i only found out much later on that it was strangle you know uh yeah so google over 92s spy pull it back let's see if we bounce at 400 Pump incoming soon. I hope so, man. We'll see. Paul Felder? Uh, I'll take it, man. Listen, I've had a lot of comparisons with how I look. You know? I've had a lot of people... The best one was probably Ryan Felipe. I'll take that, you know? Uh, the worst one was probably Forrest Griffin. You know? I'm just gonna act like I didn't hear that one. Uh, but, but no. <laughs> Paul Felder's somewhere in the middle here. You know? Uh... He's a great announcer. I like Paul Felder. He seems like a good dude. Tough fighter too, man. Uh, Joe Burrow, bro. Get. I like Jalen Mahomes. I mean, he's all right. But like Joey B, man. Come on now. All right. Spy right at 400s. We'll see if it bounces. Right at 400s. 
Yeah, I mean, I wanted Jalen to win, bro. I'm still kind of mad about the Super Bowl, man. Uh, that, that last call, bro, that holding call was suspect. It, it, he barely touched him. That changed the game, basically made it so that the game was over at the very end of the Super Bowl. I think you got to let that go. You know, I think you got to let it go. You got to give you got to give the Eagles their chance. You know, Phillies fans are probably heated after their sports year. I mean, they made it to the World Series and to the Super Bowl and lost both times. You know, tough year. But I'm an Astros fan, so I understand that. Really, I do. Uh I want the market to go up. I don't want the market to fall. Nobody should want the market to drop. We have four minutes, five minutes. Yeah, you shouldn't want the market to drop either. I mean, I don't mind if it drops, I guess. I could buy stuff up, but. Give me magic, bro. Up or down, dude. I have no idea what's going to happen, man. You know, no idea. You know. Right, 100%. It was setting up to be a beautiful game, bro. Like, at the very end, you give them a couple minutes for that last drive, bro. It should have happened. Uh, and then the ref calls a phantom holding call. That should have never been called, man. He should have never called that, you know. He barely touched them, and, and that ended the game. It was just disappointing. Uh, bounce at $400 here, and you can kind of see sh really short-term. It's pure technical, so you can kind of see psychological levels like 400 uh, stuff bounces here. All right, guys, we got four minutes. Remember to make sure you hit the play button next to the subscribe button. Number one, there's no meeting, Mika. There's no meeting here. Uh, what this is, a reaction to the previous meeting on February 1st. Uh, so we're going to cover the, the Fed minutes report. And again, I'll show you guys this just because we got only a couple minutes left. Uh, so here is the website. We'll post this to the chat. All right. So the Fed minutes report will appear right here at 2 p.m. So in about three and a half minutes, the Fed minutes report will show up right there. If you look at the previous meeting, uh, you can kind of, this is from January or this year. You can see the previous meeting stuff shows up right here. So you can click PDF or download the PDF or hit the HTML. Uh, when you look at what it is, it's long. We're not going to be able to read the whole thing here, but we're going to give you the cliff notes as we get them. And we're going to watch the market reaction. Um, so, you know, that's what we're going to cover here today. Look how long this is. So, I mean, we're not going to read it, but we're going to give you the cliff notes of it and what's important, what to look at, all that good stuff. And then we're going to watch the market reaction. Uh, it's the big thing. Uh, again, I'll post this link if you want to look at it yourself. I will post this here so you can check it out. What, chat GPT? <laughs> what are the chances the minutes report is bullish? I don't know, man. I, I, I really have no idea. I think there's an argument for it being bullish because I think Jerome Powell used the minutes report to base the 25 basis point decision and he referenced it a few times. And so I think that can be positive. That could be that that could be him saying, hey, we saw some positive things. And with that, we did 25 basis points. Uh, or it could be the opposite. Say, hey, we saw some negative things. And with that, we didn't do zero and we did 25. You know, market's bouncing right at 400. So we have two minutes left. All right, guys. All right, 400 point fours for the spy here. We got about a minute and a half left, guys. A minute and a half left. Bro, I saw some of the messages from Bing AI. It was a little funny, man. They're, they had some funny messages. That thing will legit argue with you. Uh... I'm a bear right now. What do I know? Hey, listen, I feel the same way, bro. I have no idea what's going to happen. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I don't even know why everybody's watching me right now, you know, but hey, y'all are here. We appreciate it. Subscribe. We cover it. The reason people are watching me, I'm just joking here. The reason people watch me is because we cover this data very quickly. We're reliable. Make sure you hit the live button to make sure the live button is red next to your play button to make sure you're caught up on the stream. We cover all the big economic data, CPI, PPI, jobless claims, Jerome Powell, Fed meetings, Fed minutes report, all that good stuff. Big earnings. Today, we're going to stream cover NVIDIA earnings as it goes live as well as all the other earnings. 
So we cover all that stuff very fast, very quickly, and thousands of people tune in for those streams. So subscribe if you haven't yet. We appreciate it. Uh, we got AMC. We're going to put the Dixie up instead of uh, instead of AMC here. Sorry, apes. Uh, we're going to put gold up in the middle here, and uh, we're going to watch the spy on the left. So spy left, gold middle, Dixie. I'm going to switch this around. I'm going to put gold on the, on the left, spy on the middle. Let's see the S&P reaction. All right, big response here, up and down. So look at it. positive response so far, but it's kind of a really big range doji candle. Again, guys, remember, there's no Fed meeting, actually. There's actually no Fed meeting. What it is is a PDF report. Okay, here's the meeting. And uh, the market's reacting to it. Here's the meeting right here, guys. So we are looking at it right now. Market's mostly reacted positively, almost up to 401s. If you want to see the meeting, here it is right here. We will post it in chat. Uh, and we're going to start posting the cliff notes to it right now. Here is the meeting right here in chat if you want to read the report. Um, it's more nuanced than just positive or negative, guys. It's more nuanced than just good or bad, okay? It's a 12-page document. We're going to start covering the cliff notes of it now. Uh, so bear with me. All right, so, so far we have... A few participants favored raising rates by 50 basis points. So a few participants favored raising rates by 50 basis points. All right, so we're covering this now. Uh, looking at the full report here. Again, we posted the report in chat. I'm looking down at this. See the staff's reasoning for it. All right, so we're starting to get a negative reaction. We're right at 400. Almost all participants agreed appropriate to raise interest rates by 25 basis points. So basically, some wanted 50. Most agreed that it was appropriate to raise interest rates by 25 basis points. All right, market started to dump. Dixie pop it up a little bit. Uh, get a few favored raising by 50. Uh, it's, it's not... It's. Again, thinking it's positive or negative is not how it really is, okay? So this is a big report, a 12-page document that is not just good or bad. You know, it's a lot of opinions. It's subjective. Uh, and again, we're reading you guys the cliff notes of it now that we're reading here. Uh, but it's not something where it's just positive or negative. I, I, again, I posted the report. The report is in the description. Um, and so, you know, y'all can read that yourself because we're not going to be able to read the 12 page document here. Like I said, we're only going to be able to cover, cover the cliff notes as we get them here. Um, and, and again, we're going to continue doing this. So just bear with me here. Watching the market reaction. We dipped down to 399 at the previous close, bounced all the way back up. So the manager pro Tim turned first to a review of U.S. financial developments. Market participants generally expected U.S. economic growth to moderate this year, although there was a wide dispersion in views about the extent of a potential slowdown. And I kind of see that here as well. Uh, market participants interpreted incoming data as pointing to moderating inflation risks. Uh, you can kind of see the market starting to bounce up now. The dollar index specifically is popping up. Gold is still dropping, which is a surprising interaction here with you know, you would think as the market drops, gold might go up, but let me see uh, the, a lot of, you can look at the staff review of this economic situation and says the information that's available at the time indicated that labor market conditions remain tight in December with the unemployment rate at a historical low CPI is measured by the 12 month change for personal consumption expenditure. So PCE continued to step down in November and December. And again, that data is coming out Friday. Uh, so all the participants agreed more rate hikes needed to achieve the FOMC committee's job and inflation objectives. And so we're posting this here. And again, you can kind of see all participants agreed that more rate hikes needed to achieve federal open market committee's job and inflation objectives. Uh, Participants said that restrictive monetary policy needed uh, until, let me see, until the Fed was confident inflation was falling to 2% and said that the process was, quote, likely to take some time. Market is rebounding here. The dollar index is falling back down some. Uh, so, yeah, we're reading this here. Um Participants said the job market was, quote, very tight, which we already covered, said that labor demand outstripping available supply. Again, the market started to rebound here. The dollar index is testing the 200 EMA. All 
All right, guys, spy up to 400.5s. So rebounding back up here. Again, we're continuing. So again, like I said, almost all participants agreed it was appropriate to raise basis points uh, by 25 basis points. Some favored 50. Uh, all the participants agreed that more rate hikes were needed to achieve the committee's job and inflation objectives. Participants said that restrictive monetary policy was needed until the Fed was confident inflation was falling to 2%. Uh, and they said that the process was likely to take some time. They said that the job market was very tight and said that labor demand outstripping available supply. Uh, participants saw upside risks for inflation, including the problems overseas with China's economic reopening and, the, and, and you know, the problems overseas and uh, Russia and Eastern Europe. Uh, so, again, that is what's going on right now. So far, we have dropped originally, broken back over 400, and we're starting to hold a little bit here. Uh, market started to move up almost to 401 now. So, again, so far we've had positive responses here. Uh, green relative to when the report was actually announced and you can see the dollar index is starting to break down here from it which is good and again that's essentially the fed minutes report so far we'll keep giving you cliff notes of it but yeah look at the dixie breaking down here everything's starting to rip back up to spy is up nicely google's bouncing back some microsoft's testing highs here Gold rebounding up to 170.5 for GLD. Dixie is breaking down. Spy just tapped 401s on this report. So this is all good things here, you guys. All good things. All right, we can put Bitcoin's chart up. There's Bitcoin right there. So Bitcoin up to about 24K, right under 24K. Let me get this other way. But yeah, Spy just broke highs up to 401.20s here. And like I said, I thought the extension was somewhat to the downside. I thought if we were going to bounce, it would be short term on the upside. Uh, so uh, some participants saw elevated prospects of a recession in 2023. Hear yeah, that guard dog over there sounded mean. That's Bruce. He's really a sweetheart, but, uh, All right, guys. So again, testing highs on the SPY at 401s right now. Dixie is bouncing back up a little bit. Again, we also have NVIDIA earnings today, guys. So remember, we do have NVIDIA earnings coming out today, too. About 25 shares of the spy here just kind of poking around in the stock market we'll see what happens probably should have used futures but it's all good we start flushing under vwap we'll cut it you probably take 50 shares actually here just have some fun with it now right, there's 50 shares of the spy Let's see if we bounce at 400 sorry for my dog barking Dixie's starting to rebound here, which is not really good for what we want necessarily. All right, we're basically break even on the spy trade again. We got about 50 shares. All right, slightly green now. Again, don't forget to subscribe, guys. We do this live for free. Every single weekday right here. We don't sell a course. We don't sell a service. We don't claim to be experts. We don't act like gurus. I might have no idea what I'm talking about, but we cover all this data very fast, live for free. We don't charge a penny for any of it. We don't sell a course. We have no paywalls behind our content. So hit that subscribe button if you have not already. If you want to support one of our sponsors, one of our sponsors is Top Step. If you want to day trade, just like I'm doing on the spy right here, and futures, there's no PDT in futures. You can day trade and short it, with, uh, short it without PDT restriction. And Top Step is a funded account program. So it's a beautiful way to test yourself. And to be fair, I think most traders are going to lose because most day traders lose money. But it's a lot cheaper to lose on Top Step and try to get funded. What they do is they give you a demo 
If you can hit the target on their demo while following their rules, they fund you between 50 to 150K with a 90% split. They're regulated by the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. And again, you can essentially do what I'm doing here on the SPY, but in futures, uh, in futures, the E-mini is the S&P 500. Uh, the base package on top step, we're going to go ahead and cut half of it there. Uh, the base package on top step is uh, 140 bucks a month. So if you lose it, it's not the end of the world. But if you can pass their testing, they'll fund you 50K with it. So uh, again, pretty dope little uh, funded account program. Uh, and again, you can check it out. Great way to test yourself without taking on too much risk. There's the link. Check it out. Hey, thank you, Darlock. I appreciate you, man. Uh, Spy bounced it up here. Again, we bought 50 shares of the Spy, which is actually a pretty large position in, in actual stocks. So in terms of equity here, I'll just cut that there. Uh, in terms of equity here, you know. That's about $20,000 position. Um, we made about $23 from it. Top three greatest ever right there. Uh, dollar index is kind of having a positive correlation again. Not, not. It's definitely not much of a correlation. I'll say that. Hammer candle on the Dixie. We'll see if we bounce. Hey, all good, HS man. No worries, man. Shaving your beard at 200K, bro? I don't know, man. Maybe at a mill. Give me a milli, you know. I'll shave my beard all day. You know, 200K. Eh, you know. Chump change, you know what I mean? When you're the greatest ever like this and humility just flows through you, you know. 200k is just not that impressive, you know. The only reason I'm at 100k is because like I want to look humble, you know what I mean? Uh, all right, we're pulling back to 400 dollars here. We'll see if we bounce, but a lot of chop from the Fed minutes report, really. Yeah, a lot of neutral activity. I'm not risking that much money though, hex. You know what I mean? Like, like the big thing to understand is that. I spent, uh, I had 20K on it, and but this is a large account. Like, think your swim account. This thing's got about 120,000 in buying power. Uh, but I'm not risking anywhere close to what I just spent. Like, uh, I'll put it this way. The S&P 500 is not going to go to zero, <laughs> you know? Like, I, I'm risking maybe 30 bucks there, 30, 40 bucks tops. Like, and again, that's not a great risk to reward ratio. Uh, I try to shoot for like a one-to-one -one ratio, give or take. Uh, but yeah, starting to get some reversals here. But again, a lot of chop, a lot of neutral activity so far. Um... Let's see if we can hold it. Here's the previous closing price, which is a very relevant level, a very relevant spot right there at the previous close. So again, we bounced off of there once already at 399. We'll see if we bounce off there again. Yeah, all good, Jaded. Thanks, man. Yeah, join our Discord. Nah, zero commissions on TOS, man. Uh... Bro, my TOS fees are good or fills are good, man. Uh, again, we could argue. Again, it all sounds like a pitch for you know uh, direct market access brokers. Like I said, if you're maybe if you're like super scalping all the time and you're only scalping and you need like high frequency trading fills, sure, pay your commissions, do your thing. I'm not mad at that. Uh, but you know, like I said, I'm. You know, I think the the when I'm when I'm trading swing trading on Thinkorswim. I don't think commissions are going to, uh, uh, I'd rather not pay commissions if I'm swing trading on TOS, you know, I scale into my swing trades too. So, Hey, thank you. I like it. Yeah, dude, I just get in and I, like I said, I don't care that, uh, to be honest, the fills are fine. I don't need, I, I market in, market out. I don't care about that. Uh, sometimes if I'm trading futures, I'll use, uh, I'll get ask, uh, I'll get out on the ask price on, in futures uh, because futures, my fills are a little bit more important because the, the spread's a little bit bigger. Uh, but when I'm you know, trading, it doesn't matter too much. People will criticize me for market ordering in and out, but it's like, eh. like I said, I'm green on the year. Uh, I'm going to just keep doing what I'm doing. The dog is barking. I know, bro. Honestly, I don't know what he's barking at, but that's Bruce. Bruce is getting to be so pretty, man. He's just a pretty dog, bro. You want to see Bruce? 
Let me find a picture, Bruce. He won't be quiet, though. I'm about to let him out. The problem, though, is if I let him out now, then he's going to know he can just drive me crazy and bark all the time and get what he wants. And so what I have to do is I wait for, I have to wait for him to stop barking for at least a minute or two, and then I let him out. Uh, because if I, if I let him out now, then I'm conditioning him to bark, and I don't want that, you know. That's the problem most people face when their dog's barking is that, you know, the dog barks enough to, they just give them what they want, and then the dog says, hey, if I bark and annoy my, you know, my housemate, then I'll get whatever I want. Uh, so. Nah, he just ate. Um, yeah, this is really choppy, guys. Just be careful. We're going up over VWAP, under VWAP, up to highs, back down to middle range. So it's just a choppy market right now. Just be careful. I'm, I'm slowing it down. I, you can see me. I haven't traded a ton. All right, so he stopped barking. I'm going to go let him out for a second. I'll be right back. I'm going to go let him out for a second. He stopped. All right, we're back. Uh, yeah, so uh, market just broke under the previous closing price, so it did dump. Y'all want to see Bruce? We got some pictures of Bruce, man. Bruce is getting big, bro. Bruce is a big dog, dude. His head is like twice as big as Rosie's. Sorry, I'm finding Bruce pictures right now. He's somewhere. See? Bruce is getting big. He's much bigger than he is now. All right, so we're pulling back to the previous closing price. Um, I might short a little bit. Yeah, let me see if I can short him to that level here. All right, we're three contracts here. We're in three contracts short. All right, I'll probably cut this. We're up about 2.30 already. So I want to give it time to reverse, but I will cut this pretty fast if it pushes up anymore. Big range, so I'm going to let it try to play out. But yeah, it looks like it's time to cut this, I think. Yeah, we're going to have to cut it. And we might pull right back down too, but you know we'll, we'll keep playing with this by ear and see what happens copy market kind of chopping in and out but yeah this is bruce right here he's much bigger than this now though he's grown a lot since him this was like a couple weeks ago it was like a month or two ago maybe but that's bruce right there So we are bouncing back a little bit. All right. So again, we're pulling back to 400. 400 is probably a psychological level. Why didn't you just bring us the real dog? Bro, because he's a little puppy, man. He will, bro, if I, it's going to be a bull in a china shop if I let him in my office right now. Bro, honestly, this is already like a tech graveyard because my monitor straight up fell on me. 
uh, yesterday when I came into work at 4.30 in the morning. All right, so if I let Bruce in here, bro, the whole internet's getting unplugged and, and the stream goes bye-bye, man. He's a good dog, but he's a, he's a young puppy. He's a young German Shepherd, man. He's a little, he's, a, he's still like, he's only six or seven months old. Uh, so he's not a little puppy, but he's a puppy for sure. Still got a lot of energy. Um, and so, yeah, I'd bring him in here, but it would be, it'd be a lot. Of, it, it'd be work. All right, so we're at 400, back over 400 on the spy. Yeah, if y'all are mad, I'm texting some type of way or talking about a dog. Again, y'all can cry about it. Go watch somebody else. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're covering the market as we talk. You know, we're not just going to only talk about stock market stuff. You know, y'all be okay. Uh, right, the check mark is here, Snow. Look at this. Check mark is here already, bro. Uh, so the Fed Minutes report already came out, and we covered all of it for the most part here. Uh, again, the Fed Minutes report stated this. Um, this is basically what it said. Almost all participants agreed to raise 50, uh, by 25 basis points in, in February uh, for February 1st uh, Fed meeting. A few favored 50, so a few participants favored 50. Uh, all participants agreed that more hikes were needed to achieve their committee's job and inflation objectives. And some said restrictive monetary policy was needed until the Fed was confident inflation was falling to 2% and said that the process was likely to take some time. Uh, few participants said that the market was very tight and that labor demand outstripping available supply. Some participants saw risks for inflation, including overseas problems uh, as you know the potential recession risks. Uh, some participants saw elevated prospects of in, of a recession this year, uh, and the minutes shows a few participants favored 50 basis points, and inflation still remains quote unacceptably high end quote. Uh, so that is what we're doing, or that's what the Fed minutes reported, uh, and yeah, that's what it showed. Yeah, choppy market. Market's up, down, up, down, sideways. So not the biggest edge right now. Again, we're still green on the day. Uh, we lost a little bit just now, but you can see we're up still about 180, 170 in futures. Uh, and we are up about $90 in stocks. So still green on the day, but less green and it's kind of choppy. Also, guys, remember, we are going to be covering uh, NVIDIA earnings. And so we're just going to kind of hang out and stream uh, until the NVIDIA thing starts. Um, another thing to check out, guys, check out Chart Prime. Chart Prime is another sponsor of mine. Super useful. Uh, if you look at the Market Oracle, uh, what the Market Oracle does is it shows you support or resistance levels. It automatically documents those levels. It shows you bullish and bearish engulfing candles and all that stuff. And it, it just, again, it's surprisingly accurate. It really is surprisingly accurate. Like, look at this, right? So let's just look at this morning. Is data just from pre-market in the first half of the day. You know, we showed this earlier, but this is a trading view indicator service. So you can use it in stocks, crypto, Forex, futures, all that stuff, right? And I'm going to preface everything with they are a sponsor. With them paying me money, I'm definitely biased in their favor because they pay me money. All right, so I'm definitely biased. They are a sponsor of mine. I can't guarantee you're going to make money either from them. But with that said, look, reversal up, bounce. Reversal down, signal, drop. Reversal up, signal, nice bounce over like an hour period. Uh, this one was wrong. This one might have been a little bit wrong. Uh, but again, if we keep looking here, here's them from this morning. Uh, you got reversal down, drop, reversal up, bounce. Uh, and again, if you find them, what I like to do, the edge that I like to find is when a bunch show up together at once, right? Like look at yesterday too. Like here's yesterday. They were right a ton of the time yesterday too. They're not going to be perfect, but like, look, reversal down, drop reversal up we get a small bounce bullish hammer candle we get a small bounce reversal down nice drop over like an hour reversal up we get a bounce reversal up signal at the open we get a bounce reversal down signal we get a drop reversal up signal we get a bounce and so again they can be surprisingly accurate i don't think you should base your trades purely off of them 
But when you consider the price is like 30 bucks or something like that a month, you get 40% off. Uh, if you use my link, it's like, you know, it's a pretty solid little deal. And it, if you use it not to base your trades completely off of, but to just give you an added edge in the markets, I think it can be really, really useful. Uh, check it out. Here is the link. Great way to help support the channel. Uh, so I would say the Fed's minutes report is pretty neutral. Um, analysis on Solana. Mm. It's called Chart Prime. Uh, the one I'm using is called Chart Prime. Uh, and again, this is the SPY, but you're going to use it on Bitcoin. A lot of traders use it on crypto, to be honest, more than the stock market. Uh, you could also use it on longer term trading as well. Uh, so the, there's no FO. Again, every, every Fed meeting, guys, we get a lot of people that they... They get they get it mixed up. They think the Fed minutes report is a press conference. It's not a press conference. It's a press conference reaction to the previous one. So what they're reviewing here in this report is the last Fed meeting, which was on February 1st, right? That's what this report is covering, but it's not a press conference. The Fed meeting happens every six weeks. This is not a Fed meeting. The Fed meeting where they raise or lower rates based off of interest or based off of inflation happens every six weeks. The last one was on February 1st. Weeks after that report in that meeting, they drop what's called the Fed Minutes Report, which is just a file, a 12-page document that goes live detailing why they chose to make the decision that they did during the last one, which would, in this case would be February 1st meeting, uh, as well as maybe some potential foresight into what they might do in the next one, which is going to be in mid-March, right? So far, we've got a, a choppy reaction. We've had a big range since then, but the market has basically been neutral from it. Um, so yeah, this is Thinkorswim that you're seeing right here. All right, so again, pulling back to the previous closing price, we have been in a little bit of a range since then. But I guess if I had to, it looks like the report was somewhat bearish. Trying to bounce at 399. I'm curious whether I should take another trade. I'm thinking about it for sure. Wait, what? Too quick of the what, man? Oh, you're talking about the, the yeah. Yeah, so uh, again, spot testing 399.50, pretty neutral. The question is, do we reject at this volume weighted average price level? Man, when you're right, you're right, man. Again, y'all are never going to hear the end of this. I made one of the top three greatest call-outs of all time. Thursday. All right? Thursday. Top three greatest call-outs of all time. I don't know how I'm this good, man. It just kind of flows through me when you're this humble and this, you know, this great as a stock trader. Listen to this call, guys. You want to hear it? Listen. When the spy. Oof. I'm not going to. Like I said, I told people this is what I would expect to happen. Uh, if we're going to continue on this trend, at least we're at I 410. What I would expect to happen. We're at 410 as a dip down to 400. I think, again, if you look at the market, guys, over the last four months, if we really look at the market, I would expect something like this to happen, right? So, so far, we have pumped up for a while now. You know, we pumped up big for a while now. Consolidating into this here, we're about right here now. I guess what I would expect is a pullback to 400 right here. And then maybe we get a bounce at 400. We could also break down a little bit, but I think this is where we'll start to kind of go like this. And then maybe we'll make another leg up and continue like that. Maybe, maybe not. We could just dump down here and just kind of, you know. Man, look at that. Just uh, I'm like the Nostradamus of the stock market, okay? Definitely top three greatest ever of all time ever. Uh, the bigger hat, bro. Is my hat too small, man? I don't think it's too small, bro. My hat fits. It's not like the Sandlot hat, is it? You know? I couldn't get the fish hat from the Sandlot, you know. Oh, bro, I am definitely happy, dude. I'm the greatest of all time, Hassan. You didn't know, man? Listen, I'm just going to, you know, assume that you were mistaken in your comments, sir. <laughs> uh,
Uh, the release came out about 30 minutes ago, guys. It came out at 2 p.m. Nah, and the reason I'm showing that over and over again is because the Bears act like I'm just only long, you know, that I'm a, I'm just always long and that I'm never short. And I'm kind of showing them like, hey, look, I caught exactly what happened. If you look at that, we said that at 410. And so, again, just to put this into perspective, we said this right here. We said that when the market was right here. And what we said, the line we drew on the chart was right here. And that's exactly what we did. Sold all my Teslas. Wait, you had multiple Teslas? Bitcoin at 22 to 21K? Uh, is this good news? I don't know. I wouldn't really interpret this as positive. Uh, again, reading the cliff notes, it looks more negative. Uh, they, they were mostly negative comments. Again, if you look at the comments here, inflation remains unacceptably high. Participants saw elevated prospects of a recession in 23. Uh, participants saw upside risks for inflation, including all the problems overseas. Said job market was very tight and that labor demand was outstripping available supply. They said that restrictive monetary policy was needed until the Fed was confident inflation would fall to 2%. Said it would take time to get that. Uh, all the participants agreed that more hikes were needed, so we're not going to pivot to zero. Uh, some even wanted 50 basis points. Um, and so again, I think we'll probably do 50 next Fed meeting, but I'm not 100% sure. There's no speech today. It's just a report. Hey, thank you. Uh, Derek, I mean, what do you... Okay, so... I get it you want me to be wrong because, you know, a lot of people have been pushing for a market to crash, right? But if I didn't think the market was going to drop where it was... Again, the, the video in context was somebody saying, hey, should I buy the market right now? And that was last Thursday. So that was on, what day was that? That was on the 16th, it's the 22nd, right? When I said that, again, it, it, that video was clipped from Thursday's PPI stream on Thursday. Uh, so I 100% thought the market was too extended to buy it up right there. Uh, again, the problem with people who think the market is gonna crash is this, right? The problem is that they think that because I think the market's not going to necessarily crash, that I think the market's only going to go up. You know, there's a difference between thinking the market's going to crash and that the market is just never endingly going to go up. You know, there's a difference between thinking that and thinking the market's extended on the upside short term. You know, uh, it depends on what time frame we're looking at it, but it's not so binary, man. You know, it, it again, I don't think the market's going to go straight up, but when we're at 410 and we've been moving up nonstop for three weeks, I think it's reasonable to assume, hey, I think the market might pull back a little bit now. Doesn't mean we're going to crash. No, it doesn't. Burry said the market's going to crash and we didn't, you know, uh, and so there's a difference there. Oh, if you're kidding, my bad. Top three overreactors in the world right now, for sure. You know, definitely top three. Uh, but no, I think running a channel like this, you got to react fast. Uh, what time frame is confusing you, bro? There's no breaking news. Uh, <laughs> what are some beginner tips you can give new traders? I say cut losses. Yeah, cutting losses is one of the biggest skills you can have in trading. Um... Hey, one love, my guy. Thank you, man. No, you're all good, Derek. You know I've had beef with the Bears lately, bro. You know, I gotta gotta react fast here. You know what I mean? Uh, but no, uh, best tips for new traders: just trade small. Stop trying to be a guru on Twitter. Okay. Stop trying to make a thousand dollars in a day while you lose five k. All right. Stop trying to do that. You know, you're gonna lose in the beginning. The larger you trade, means you're gonna lose more. Uh, learn how to cut losses. Uh, the biggest edge in the financial markets is that stocks are generally going to go up over a very long term, you know, time period. Stocks are going to go up most of the time. That's the biggest edge. If you look at the S&P 500 over the last 40 years, this is the biggest edge you'll have in the financial markets. And this is the biggest inflationary hedge you'll ever get. Uh, so 
you know, if you don't have success day trading, don't be too stubborn with it. Find something else, you know. Like I said, I'm day traded. I, I do better at swing trading more than anything else. Uh, but, but yeah, that's the best advice for new traders, I think. I don't know. You can add to a losing trade. The the what it is though. Like you can add to a losing trade, but that needs to be your plan before the trade. You know, like if I'm gonna get in the spy at 400, I can I can enter that I can enter the spy at 400 and say, hey, if we drop down to 380, uh, I'm gonna scale into this up to 395 and try to average my position around you know 30 uh, 396 397 whatever the average will turn out to be. But that's fine if that's my plan ahead of time. Right. What you shouldn't do is say, hey, I'm going to enter the spy right here at 400 and that's it. I'm not going to add any more. I don't have any more buying power and then be very wrong and then get frustrated and then just add more and then be even more wrong and then get even more frustrated and then add even more until you're taking huge swings and a very small account and that account's gone. That's what happens to a lot of traders. Uh, but again, it's all about trading the right size. You can scale in as long as you're still trading small, uh, you know. You're not going to make $1,000 a day if you got less than 500K safely, you know. You can do it. You might get lucky on indiv individual days where you make 1000 bucks, but, you know, safely is a completely different story. Uh, you're going to need hundreds of thousands of dollars in order to do that. Uh, and if you, and a lot of people are going to say, nah, -uh, you know, I did this. That's fine. But, you know, that's an outlier situation if, if, if you even did it successfully. Uh, so I think having reasonable expectations and getting past all the nonsense guru talk is really important. You know, also, uh, most trading content is publicly available for free. You don't have to pay for it. Uh, you know, Google's your friend. YouTube's your friend. You can find most good, high quality content available there for free, in my opinion. When we trade stocks, futures, everything. Ooh, I would say less than 5%, Lazar. What time frame do I use for swing trading? I uh, mix up like a 15 minute, 30 minute chart and a daily chart. Should I buy a 10K account or a 25K funded account challenge as a beginner? You mean like what size funded program? Whatever fits your budget, man, you know. Oh, there's weirdos everywhere, bro. Bro, I, YouTube, man, I run into some weirdos, bro. I want, there's some obsessed people here, you know? I mean, when you look this good, I mean, listen, people are going to be obsessed with you. That's okay. Uh, but, um, but no, there's some genuinely weird people here, man. Uh, I appreciate you guys, though. Most people are cool, though. But you get people who are, like, obsessive and, like, really strange and kind of, like, stalk you and say weird things and then create other accounts and then say more weird things and then you know, talk smack and then, you know, contact all the people. Like, it's just weird, man. You get some weirdos. I think the dollar goes long because Powell is more, yeah, maybe. I think, again, with Powell, man, I think it's understandable how, like, okay. <laughs> uh, no, so I think Powell, I, I think the problem with Powell is, there's not really a problem, but I think he doesn't want to have a crash under his watch, right? And I think sometimes for inflation, it's going to be better to rip the Band-Aid off and just do like a really high, you know, sustained rate hike for a couple months or for, you know, a, a quarter or two and really got to rip the Band-Aid off of it and combat inflation in that regard and drop prices uh, and then kind of, you know, get it done. Um, but I think Powell doesn't want to crash necessarily under his watch. And I think because of that, he is more so doing longer term sustained rate hikes instead of just really aggressive ones over a shorter period of time. Uh, and again, the argument's a subjective one. Like, you know, we can argue, but it is subjective. Like it's it's opinionated. So, and again, the, the more they aggressively they rate, they raise rates, the, the more short term pain you're gonna get in markets. Someone who really likes to talk about how he looks. Oh, man, listen. I mean, you know, we ooze humility, humility over here, you know. Uh, you short or long right now? Mostly long.
Yeah, Joshua, they said it'd be a couple years. I think 2024 was their target for like two point something percent, I think. Platforms are subjective. Uh, there's a lot of good ones. Inverse ETFs. Yeah, I mean, if you want to short, inverse ETFs can be great. Um, because, I mean, to short in a regular account, you need margin. I would just trade futures if you want to short, though. Futures market, you can essentially short whatever you want exposure to. Stocks, uh, crypto in some aspects of it, uh, you know, commodities. You can short all that stuff in futures. And again, if you want to try out a funded account program, like if you want to try out some futures... Top Step is the most legit futures funded program in the world. They've been around for over a decade. They fund thousands of traders a year. They pay out millions of dollars. And it's just a great test of your skill. Again, to be fair, I'm biased because they pay me money and they're a sponsor. Uh, and I'm, you know, and I think most traders are gonna lose these funded account programs. But I, I kind of think that's the point because it's cheaper to lose a top step account than it is to put up 15K in futures and lose thousands of dollars trying it out yourself. And it's a great middle ground. Like the funded account program, you still got some pressure. It's not just base like paper. You got some pressure to succeed. They give you a profit target. If you can hit it without hitting their max loss and pass the rest of their testing, then they fund you with a 90% split. Uh, base package is less than 140 bucks a month if you use my link as well. Check it out. Uh, again, I'm, I'm very biased though because they're a sponsor of mine. Oh wait, let me remove that and uh, post this one. options funded programs not that i know of i mean the, the you can buy options for relatively cheap there's less restriction on options right the funded account programs are good because in order to really trade like the e-mini or, or the s p 500 of the spy you're gonna need tens of thousands of dollars i don't necessarily know if you need that much trading options i think you could just do that small size so i don't know if you would necessarily need to get funded in options as opposed to like futures or stocks uh, it's just different Do you think we hit the market low in October at around 349 on the SPY? Um, I hope so. No, I, I really don't know for sure. I get on the stream or is it just me? Let me see. Can y'all hear me? Sound check? Is the stream clear? Okay, yeah, it's clear. I don't know why it was lagging for me. Um Alright, cool. Sorry. Hey, thank you, Kevin. Uh, SPX is heavy. Yeah, market's breaking down a little bit. Dollar index is pumping up, too. We're at 104.50s on the Dixie. What percentage of loss would you cut your losses over six months? Um, for what type of trades? Hey, what's up, One Love? Thank you, man. Uh, welcome, dude. Hope, hope you're doing good, Dave. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. My account's like 30K. I think if I started to lose, like, and if an investment started to lose over like five to seven thousand, I'd probably cut it, you know, depending on what it was and, and the nuance behind it. No, I'm not sending you any money, man. Sorry. Yep. In your opinion, what's the next resistance for the dollar index? Uh, 104.667 is the next short-term one. 
the high of the last week, or really the high of the last 10 days, 20 days. Might be longer than that too. Uh, no, so yes, yeah, the high of the last 20 days. At 10460s. Let me see. Yeah, last time we hit that level, it was back in January. So the high of the last like month. Uh, yeah, we're covering that earnings. We're going to stream the full earnings call as well as the earnings reaction here. All right, guys. But yeah, market started to break down. Um, again, we thought this might happen. Uh, just going to kind of wait and see what happens now. how much you think you need to trade indexes full time uh we'll cover lucid earnings we'll cover nvidia earnings we'll cover all the big ones um but we're gonna focus on nvidia but we'll cover lucid for sure uh we'll drop it as soon as it comes out um yeah so uh, in order to i mean it depends on how you're trading owen you know in order to like live off of dividends you need like a mill maybe uh in order to really day trade comfortably uh, if you're trying to like professionally day trade, you need a couple hundred thousand, I would say, uh, maybe like one to 200 K, um, give or take. If you're swing trading, it varies depending on what you're trading and the niche of what you're doing, you know, the sector of trading, I guess. Do you think 50 basis points? I think we'll probably do 50 for the next rate hike decision, but again, I, I really don't know. Well, it depends on what kind of trading you're doing. 10K is not going to get you anywhere day trading, unless you're day trading futures. I short the market, just not long term. I don't think shorting long term is, is big. I think the big, biggest edge you get in markets is long term stocks are going to go up s&p 500 gives you 8 to 12 percent a year that's a big edge i'm just not going to bet against that edge long term short term i short stuff though i shorted stuff today i might short the spy right now to be honest but i guess we will All right, we got 25 shares short of the spy just anticipating rejection at 399s maybe small little trade but Headphones are dying. Take them off. Uh, Nvidia earnings drop, uh, so they actually come out at, uh, so Nvidia earnings drop at 420 market time, I wish it was early too, but it's all good. We're gonna go ahead and add a little bit to this. We got 50 shares now, the SPY. 
Yeah, we already got a little cushion on the day that we made money on. So we'll see if we can flush back down. Yeah, I think the biggest problem is that there's just a lot of unrealistic expectations for traders, man. Like, there's a lot of traders that are just having super un un uh, unreasonable expectations, is what it is. Like, most, uh, the thing you got to really understand is that most traders are going to lose money. Most day traders, specifically, are going to lose money. But it's like, you got a bunch of people slanging in courses to new traders that, you know, they're kind of promising them the world and, they're, and, and most of the content in those is, like, publicly available. So it's like stuff that you're going to be able to find for free on YouTube already. Uh, yet, you know, you got a lot of people, you know, you got a lot, I'll put it this way. You got a bunch of 18 year olds with braces trying to claim to be stock market experts selling courses for thousands of dollars. And like young people relate to them more. So they're like, oh, this guy must be, it's just nonsense, total nonsense. Most of it's publicly available. Uh, and again, in order to sell those courses, what happens uh, what happens is like the trader has to give them unrealistic expectations. All right, so we just got a nice little drop. We're going to take half off there. Um, but yeah, in order to sell those courses and make people pay thousands of dollars, the trader has to put out like, yeah, you're going to get rich quick financial freedom independence. You know, it's total BS, man. It's total nonsense. They're just trying to sell courses to you. Uh, and again, the, the, a larger problem is like the people that buy the courses are so biased, like with confirmation bias. It's like you spend three grand on a, on a day trading course. Bro, that course could be the worst course you've ever seen. You're still going to say it's great. You're still the oh, best course I've ever had, you know. Um, and so that has like kind of is part of the big cycle of, you know, new traders getting taken advantage of. And instead of standing up and being like, yo, this course was crap, you know, they're just so desperate to pander to the experts who are they're kind of looking at like celebrities that they just kind of. I don't know. That's really what happens, though. Yeah. Uh, All right, so again, we're, we're, we're day trading short term here. We'll probably cut this pretty fast. All right, I made about $40 um, shorting the SPY. But like I said, I short stuff. Uh, we just don't take long-term shorts. So again, I think long-term shorts are, you know, everybody wants to be Michael Burry, but like stock market crash has trended every year for the last five or 10 years. You know what I mean? So it's just, everybody wants to be Michael Burry. Yeah, good luck, Kelvin. All good, man. All right, but yeah, like I said, we just made a little forty dollars here. Um, not bad. Again, spies is pretty flat on the day. Not much going on right now. You wear short shorts? Me? Nah. Not really. I mean, they're not like early 2000s long, but they're not really necessarily short either. You know? I'm not like Pistol Pete out here, you know? But, I don't know, I'd say they're pretty normal length. Yeah, give me some McDonald's, bro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's see if we keep breaking down. Again, the reason I shorted into this is because we have the previous closing price, which is like a big milestone level right there. So, like, we waited for the little bounce back, and we shorted into it and got the rejection. Uh, I'm, from, uh, I'm from Louisiana uh, originally, but I'm in Houston right now. McDonald's? Yeah, I haven't actually eaten McDonald's in like a year plus. I gave it up. Gold go up. Yeah, gold is... Uh, I was looking at it earlier. Gold's dropping with the market. Which is an interesting dynamic of it. AMC's still down there. 
Oh, I've lost a couple accounts for sure. I mean, I've been trading for like years and years though. That's gonna happen. Especially when in the beginning, I've definitely lost. I haven't lost account in a while though. But uh, mostly happens at the beginning when you're learning. Heard you guys at the best housing market. I mean, you know, we got nice houses out here for cheap. Good neighborhoods, you know. Like for a million dollars in Texas, you can get a freaking huge mansion, you know. Talking like 6,000 square foot, you know, 10,000 square foot property. Uh, 6,000 square foot home. But I mean, there's pros and cons, man. Yeah. For whatever reason, like my, my player is kind of lagging up a little bit. Okay, Lunar, sorry. Pawn has been telling me to check this one out. I haven't been, I, I, I kind of missed it. Yeah, look at Lunar here, guys. Wow. Somebody talked about this one. Look at this thing, man. This thing has gone absolutely ridiculous, man. Look at that. This thing went from $11 up to 100 Higher than that, up to 140 basically. Yeah, Baton Rouge, I mean... I love Baton Rouge, man. It's my hometown. I love Baton Rouge, but Shots fired, Grub. Ooh, that hurts, bro. It hurts, bro. I mean, bro, LSU is doing pretty good, man. LSU did pretty good. We had a rebuilding season. We had Coach Kelly come in. You know, we lost uh, Coach O. Coach O was just making bad decisions. I'm from Louisiana. I wanted Coach O to stay coach. All right. But he was just making bad decisions. Not even not even necessarily like football decisions. He was just making bad decisions, you know. Uh, and, but Coach Kelly came in. You know, we had a... Uh, the new quarterback who's got some legs on him, man, he can, he's fast. LSU wasn't doing that bad. Uh, you know, I wanted Joey Burrow to win uh, the World Series, but we got robbed again. You know, and then I wanted Jalen Hurts to win, and we got robbed there too. And I'm not that mad at Coach Hill, but, you know. All right, guys. So we again, we do have Nvidia earnings coming out pretty soon. Um, yeah, Daniels was good. Wait, isn't Daniels gonna be on his fifty fifth season though, Chris? Next year, isn't it his fifth season or was his fifth season uh, this last year? Uh, yeah, we already covered the cliff nose. No, I'm live every day, man. Every day we cover. Again, we get a lot of people. We get thousands of people tuning into these streams because like CPI, PPI, jobless claims, retail sales, GDP tomorrow. We got GDP and jobless claims tomorrow. Uh, the point is like we've got a couple sources. I'm not really going to give up my sources, but when we get economical data, we cover it very fast. We drop it very quickly, you know, uh, so thousands of people tune in for that. And so subscribe if you haven't yet. We appreciate the support, guys. Uh, yeah, we're just kind of sitting back right now waiting for uh, we're going to do an NVIDIA stream in a couple minutes. In fact, let me mark that here. There it is. 
Thank you. Are you guys buying up stuff yet? Let me know. I don't know. Okay, yeah, we're covering NVIDIA. Uh, so, yeah, we got NVIDIA. We got Lucid earnings today. Um, so, yeah, NVIDIA, Lucid earnings. We'll be covering those live. Order four. Market bounces back to 398. Again, we'll see what happens. But Etsy, yeah, we got Etsy. We're gonna cover all the big ones. Uh, so again, we're gonna cover all the major ones that come out today. So we're gonna cover Nvidia, Lucid, Etsy, eBay, all the big ones that drop. Um, we're actually gonna stream the Nvidia earnings call. This we're gonna stream the full Nvidia call live. Uh, so that's kind of how we're gonna do it. So we're gonna cover all of them, but we're gonna stream the actual earnings call for Nvidia. Yeah, well, we're still here because we're covering NVIDIA earnings pretty soon. Yeah, bear with me, guys. We are getting ready to uh, stream. Yeah, so this is Lucid quarter four, or this is NVIDIA quarter four earnings, I believe. Let me get the redirect working. All right, still under 399 in between a range between 397.50 and 398. Again, we are going to get ready. Uh, be ready here. We're going to cover, again, the full NVIDIA earnings. Uh, let me make sure we got this going live. And again, y'all hit that subscribe button. Again, help me hit. We're almost, to be honest, guys, we got less than 150 subs away from 101,000 subs. So, hey, hit that subscribe button, guys. Help us hit that 100. We'll probably hit it today, I'm guessing, here with the NVIDIA earnings stream coming up. We'll probably hit that today, to be honest. Um, so, again, help us get there, guys. Hit that subscribe button. Again, check out Top Step. Uh, again, you won't have to go anywhere. As soon as we end the stream, which is going to be soon, it's immediately going to bring you to the NVIDIA earnings stream. All right? So, you won't have to go anywhere. Literally, as soon as we hit close, it should immediately bring you to the NVIDIA earnings stream. And again, SPY breaking down. We're going to be we're gonna be hanging out for the next hour, basically, doing the same thing we're doing here. So, don't go anywhere, guys. Again, as soon as we close the stream, uh, it's going to bring you to the NVIDIA earnings stream. Let me make sure it does. Yeah, so that's what it's going to do. So again, don't go anywhere. As soon as we close this down, it's going to bring you to the NVIDIA stream. Uh, if it doesn't, for whatever reason, uh, here is the link for that. So if it doesn't, uh, for whatever reason, again, I'll, I'll give you this link and you can watch it here. Uh, but it should bring you uh, youtube.com slash beginner trading. Uh, but there's the link for the NVIDIA stream. Again, it starts pretty soon. All right, we'll go ahead and start it up right now. We'll crank it up right now. Um, but yeah, we'll see you guys over there. All right, so we'll be uh, again. Don't go anywhere. We're we're starting that stream up right now, and then as soon as uh, yeah, as soon as we close this down, it should redirect you directly to the Nvidia stream. Let me know if it does. Uh, but again, subscribe just in case. You know, sub just in case. All right. Uh, Nvidia earnings drop in about fifty minutes or so. In fifty minutes. Hey, uh, what's up, Tiny? Hey, good day, Tiny. Have a good day. I haven't checked that one out. Is it good?
All right, so we started up the NVIDIA stream here, guys. We started up the NVIDIA stream. Again, as soon as we close this down, it's immediately going to bring you to the NVIDIA stream. So we'll see you guys over there. Again, don't go anywhere. As soon as we hit close, it should bring you straight to the NVIDIA stream. We'll see you guys over there.